hurdling, but she's so good that they're trying to work on the things that she's not as good at. So that's why she's been running 1,500 meters. Well, exactly right. People tend to forget, I think, that 99% of a steeplechase is flat running between the barriers, you know, and yeah. I have made the mistake in the years gone by of being a little critical of some of the Kenyans and Ethiopians and their hurdling technique. And I'm sure they're thinking, the hurdling's not much to do with it, frankly. We're running pretty hard between the barriers. So flat speed, flat ability is vital. And you look at the great steeplechasers, and they all do have world-class ability over 1,500 and 3,000 metres, 5,000 metres on the flat. But Courtney Frerichs slots into second place there behind Katie Kunk, and uh, she must be very, very comfortable at this pace. It looks slow. Ali Ostrander on the outside there in the black and yellow kit. Three-time NCAA champion. Ran in the heat in Austin, so understands what it's like to run in this kind of heat and humidity. And she looks great this year. She's her first year as a pro, but comes in here with lots of uh, anticipation. Well, just moments ago, we saw Sean Donnelly throw 76-38 for his opening effort in this second flight of the men's uh, hammer. This is Rudy Winkler, though, from the New York Athletic Club, and this was big from Rudy Winkler. He liked it, pumps the air with his one finger aloft competition far from over but that is a fabulous fabulous effort from Winkler boy oh boy 76 76 his lifetime best he's just thrown 76 51 very close to being his best ever throw well Courtney Frerichs there in the red in this uh, first of two heats of the women's steeplechase almost having to run on the spot tread water there as she came out of that water jump and waiting for somebody else to come through I don't think she I think she's determined, Carrie, to not take the lead here. Well, she doesn't need to, right? I mean, she needs to just get through and, and be in that top three. Or, excuse me, it's the top five. And I think that Courtney Ferrex has so much confidence right now. She wants to run her own race. Well, this is Connor McCulloch. And again, this uh, second group in the men's hammer producing some big, big throws. McCulloch here. With that uh, opening throw, 76 meters 92, 252 feet 4. It's a facility record. It's a season's best. Another New York Athletic Club man, and they are in first and second at the moment. That's three 76 meter throws in the last three efforts in that hammer. So Kunk continues to uh, lead from Frerichs. Lawrence on the outside there moves into fourth place. Mel Lawrence having a great year, running a solid 5,000 meters to start off her season, and then PRing in the 3,000 meter steeple here. Um, we've been working under Lauren Fleshman. A lot of you all know Lauren Fleshman's name, U.S. champion, and, and now coaching in Bend, Oregon, uh, a group of runners there. But yeah, Mel Lawrence is, the, is one to watch. She has a really good shot at making this team. What it is on the slow side. And uh, we're not expecting this to be much quicker. I thought with this early pace, Carrie, than around 9.30, 9.40 pace. Well, you know, I'm not surprised. It's hot out there. They're trying to conserve. You know, this is a long race for this kind of heat. And so, I mean, they're going to wind it up, no doubt. They'll break it open a little bit, but no need to do it right now. Well, one, two athletes beginning to drop away. Courtney Frerichs on two or three occasions had to sort of check her stride to try and stay back from the front end of this one in the lead at the moment Katie Kunk of the New Jersey New York Track Club moving up around the outside a little figure of Ostrander Ali Ostrander from the Boot Brooks Beast Track Club good good athlete Ostrander NCAA champion for the last three seasons can you believe has that hat trick champion in 2017, 2018, and 2019. And earlier on this year, she ran a personal best at 1500, 414. Doesn't yet have that international class flat speed, but that may come. She's got good strength. She's a 3206, 10,000 meter runner. You know, she's very good in, the, in cross country as well. She's been super good since high school. And I know I keep saying super day, um, but she has been really good since high school. She's handled the pressure very well of, you know, how to how to deal with this all. You know, she's winning a lot. And when you are a three-time NCAA champion, year in and year out, having that pressure, she's ready to be a pro. She's ready to take on the best. And look at her leading the very best right now, American record holder, Courtney Frerichs. And I guess she's learning from the best here alongside. You know, she's going to step into the pro ranks. She's at Boise State at the moment, but I guess she's going to learn to 
uh, into the pro ranks, then she will need to improve her flat speed. She doesn't have an international class time at any flat distance of 1,500, 3,000, 5,000. She's run an 8.54 on an oversized track in uh, Seattle for 3,000, which is beginning to get there. But 15.16, her indoor best for 5,000 metres, while strong, is not yet quite world class. But Tim, you don't see a lot of athletes at her age have that kind of range over all distances. I mean, she's running well indoors, outdoors, flat, and over steeple. This is a newer event for her. Once she took it on, she, she won right away, so she's learning alongside. And you really, a lot of her PRs came from 2016. She, she did run the 10,000 meters this year in 2019, but you know, she is somebody that has been learning the sport and figuring out which is her exact distance, because she's good at all of them. Well, you're right. It's very easy to forget, I guess, when she's got such a fabulous CV, three NCAA titles, just how young she is. But she goes through now in the lead with three laps to run. And uh, still looking very comfortable on her shoulder, Courtney Frerichs, who could unleash a very fast last kilometre if she so chose. Her American record, 9.00.85, knocking on the door of sub-nine-minute territory. And that is a very, very thinly populated club on the uh, global all-time list. She's the 12th fastest ever at the moment over the steeplechase barriers. And uh, if they've been working on a flat speed, then she may yet go under nine minutes this year. You know, I think this is the first year for Courtney Ferrex where she expects things from herself. I mean, I think she always knew how good she could be. But when she ran her nine flat, I think she was like, what just happened? You know, it's so exciting to see. She was really excited. Obviously, when she won her, her silver medal at the World Championships as well, that was just like, oh, my goodness, she was just supposed to hang on to Emma. And you know if you can hang on to Emma Colburn, you're going to see some great things. But it's been neat to follow her career and to see the excitement that she gets from the sport. And not only are we excited for her, but her coaches are just thrilled for what she's been doing. Well, Emma Colburn, of course, the reigning world champion, goes in the next heat. As they come to uh, two laps to run. And Ali Ostrander doing a great job here of easing away from, well, the entire field apart from Courtney Frerichs. Frerichs, of course, setting that US record in that bizarre world record race in Monaco in July last year. She finished uh, a long way back and yet set a fabulous uh, performance. This is the third round throw for Solomon Sivins in the javelin. Now, 51 meters in the first round, in the second round. He had a no throw to open with, a disappointing 51 meters in the second round. Remember, he's a 65 meter thrower. And uh, Simmons producing something a little bit better with that effort, I think, in the third and final round waiting for the mark to come up he's no 51 10 well he really hasn't hit his straps at all in this one a 65 meter thrower he's some 14 meters down on his best but uh, well, he has the lead at the moment it was interesting just to watch that last water jump Ali Ostrander did not like having Courtney go in front of her she she put a big surge on to get back in front just by one one step but she wanted she clearly has something going right now where she wants to lead this race hold this position of owning the the rail and Courtney kind of settled back in and let her do that top well, five again go to the next to go to the final next four fastest they went through the bell in around 8:31 both loping along down the back straight. They've got about a 30 meter gap behind them. And uh, it is Lawrence back in third place. Murray Lawrence, the Little Wings Athletics Club. The gap's enormous here. Frerichs now hits the front for the first time. She's been reluctant to do so for seven laps, but now for the first time she gets a good clear look at that water jump takes it in her stride very comfortably she looks in fabulous shape and uh, this is a perfect what we would call a pipe opener just a little uh, warm-up almost for Sunday's final from Courtney Frerichs great hurdler cleared that one like a 400 meter hurdler she eases home here ahead of Olia Strander and it is the first five who go through by right remember so Frerichs and Ostrander Coming through in third place is uh, Mary Lawrence. And then in fourth place 
is that Alicia Douglas, I think. Alex Wilson, I believe. Yes, Alicia. And that's Mel Lawrence. She in the in the results you'll see Marie, but she goes by Mel. Again, having a great great season so far. On nine forty six, the winning time for Rakoni Frericks. Keddie Kunk, the early leader, goes through as the fifth automatic qualifier with ten fourteen, and then there was a gap of some eight seconds or so behind her to Alicia Douglas on ten twenty two. So not ideal conditions. It's it's warm out there, it's windy, and many of those athletes have had to complete the majority of the race in isolation. Very tough indeed. That uh, caption does have.